Hey guys, Harry here, and it's Beers with H after eight. Well, yeah, that's what the uh, title I came up with. Don't know if it's any good, but I'll roll with it for these next couple of videos. So there's got about 20 minutes of footage here of me doing some pick and dip, running those two corners. I'm just gonna go over uh, some of the pros of using pick and dip with uh, just the corners already up. Uh, one of the best things I like about building corners is that when you're running in, it seems faster than using a profile. It's just corner block up at each side, and then when you're running in, your bricks are already gauged to the joints below when you're using building your corners, so you, it always works bricks. You, you get less perp drift, I find, when the corner's already up. And the, one of the great things is as well, you're not having to check them profiles them two corners are plumb the, the, you know what you're filling in the gable in between is also going to be plumb because obviously you could have like uh, three profiles set up like uh, you know I, I own four pro profiles but it's very rare I have more than two on and you can sometimes do a three profile setup where you've got you know one pillar one profile at the uh, garage pillar one profile at the rear and then one profile at the uh, the far corner of the garage so you've got a three profile set up and then you can run uh, the full length of the back of the garage. You can even tail around a few bricks and then just keep racking the garage all the way back and get the garage built in one big long run. Uh, in effect, basically making what would be a 30 brick run, uh, more or less a 45 brick run, uh, if you do it like that. And obviously what I expressed in the last video, it's very time of the year dependent. Um, I'd definitely build a garage like that in one big straight run uh, by doing a three pro a three profile setup uh, in the middle of winter. That'd be ideal. I'd normally build three little corners, uh, one at the you know I'd, I'd ideally actually I, this is what I used to. I used to build four corners. I used to build uh, a six course corner uh, at the first pillar. Same at the other side, and then a six course corner at the back, and a six course corner at the back uh, at the other side. So I'd have four six course corners all over, and I'd strap. And by the time I'd done that, I'd run those six course in all the way around. And then normally by that time, I could point up, and then I could go for snap. And then the six course that I'd already laid would be going off quite good, especially the first couple of corners I built. They'd be going off really uh, quite solid. Then I could strap a profile on after my snap. And then I'd run round in a big long flank. So I'd just keep, you know, loading the motorboards up, running round in a big long flank, and the bricks would be normally wet in, the, you know, in winter time of year or in wetter weather. And uh, they keep the wetness for like 20 cores. I'm not kidding you. Like there's these these bricks I'm laying right now will keep their wetness. I remember laying these in winter last year, and these kept, these kept their, uh, you know, kept the wetness of the joints for a good like 25 course so you know there's there's definitely and then you could just basically do all your joints at the end of the day you know avoiding the wet patches uh, i learned off an old bricky to do all the wet bricks in one course then all the dry bricks and all the wet bricks which is quite a good idea to be honest i will try doing that more in winter uh doing all, one course of wet one course of dry one course of wet and that really gets rid of your wet bricks quick if you can take time to segregate your bricks which, especially with the slow starts you get in winter with like the, it being too cold in the morning or definitely having like a bit of rain on the morning or especially in winter time, the silo tends to break more. Um, it's just one of them things with the frost getting in and moisture getting into the worm, the silo tends to break down. So there's always a bit of cleaning session going on with a few of the gangs either. I've, you know, I've, I've stripped down a plenty of silos in my time. And it's not, and it's one thing that does slow you down in winter, in you know, in the winter months. So, so that'd be normally a good time to segregate your bricks. You know, segregate all the wet ones into one stack, all your dry ones into another stack. So you'd stack up all your dry ones and all the wet bricks. You just do in a little mini stack next to all your your dry, and then blast on a course of wet. Uh, obviously, with the course of dry underneath, and then on top of that course of wet, blast a course of dry, and then it helps suck the moisture out of top and bottom so it gets rid of them wet bricks pretty quick um it's a pretty good it's a pretty good technique i've, I've seen it used in the january and february winter months uh, that were just that are now behind us thank god 
uh, you know, I, I use that technique and it worked really well. So I'm going to utilize that in uh, future builds. Um, this garage that I'm building right now, this is the only footage I got of it. Uh, obviously me running in this footage. Um, uh, the, you know, pick and dip isn't really, um, I find, you know, personally frog bricks, you know, it is made, they are more, they're easier to do pick and dip with. But to be quite honest, I prefer the perforated bricks for pick and dip. Um, a lot of people say, you know, they like the, uh, you know, the frog bricks, you know, the old school London frog brick um, for pick and dip. And, you know, it is easy to do pick and dip. You know, your joints do get filled a little bit easier because of the flat face, flat bottom of the frog. So you have the frog and then you have the flat side. And it's a little bit easier, but I find the wrist strain is like, what noticeable what more noticeable um what more finger you know, what more finger wear because you're pressing the brick down more and uh you like sliding on a flat plane whereas with a perforated brick you've always got somewhere for the motor to go so there's less strain on the wrist in the day because my fingers are absolutely absolutely destroyed like my my brick hand which is my right hand because my trial is my left i'm left-handed my brick hand you know like my my pointer finger that's like that's all scabbed and cut my thumb got a nice nice fucking dry crack in the middle of that and then my little finger my little fingers the skin was wearing away but it's it's come back so i point a finger on my thumb so i had some real hammer this week so I'm gonna go out to bnm gonna experiment with some more gloves from bnm um or home bargains home bargains or bnm are a pretty good place to get cheap gloves um a lot of people say uh i've heard people say they like using thin gloves but especially if you're laying upwards of like 600 bricks a day uh, that's like my sort of my main you know my my goal is to eight to, to lay about 600 bricks you know what i mean because if you average out you're getting 550 a thou or 600 a thou 600 bricks is 300 is 500 so that's like 360 360 so if you can lay 600 bricks a day you know your hands are going to get some hammer pick and dip because it is more there's more contact with your hand to brick pressing because you're not you're not furrowing the gobbo there's more there's just more you know more strain on the on the hand in general it's going to be more wear on the hand and fingers pressing that brick into place and dragging the dragging motion as well that really destroys your fingers and your hands so i'm going to experiment with some cheaper gloves I've always used the Spur and Jackson gloves, been a real fan of those, but I found they only last about two days. So I know 50p a day ain't bad for gloves, but you've got to really keep on top of the gloves. Um, I've been putting tape, uh, duct tape on my thumbs and my fingers. So I've had like three, basically only all four fingers. Uh, so four, three fingers and one thumb taped up today and I had my middle finger. Um, that I didn't have any tape on today. And that was, that's how I've been laying. And, I believe definitely using the winter gloves year round, the thicker gloves really come in handy, especially with the Dura Soft Thin Handle, the thicker rubber on the gloves um, just makes it feel, you know, get a good grip. And I've got quite long fingers, so I do like the, the, the sort of the thicker feel on with your gloves. And I just like the padding, I like the padding, you know, especially when you're like myself, you know, I get my own water a lot of the days if my dad's with me, especially if we get the, the strategic tub placement right behind the boards. Um, you know, uh, I end up, you know, getting my own mortar. So your hands get a bit torn on the, you know, can get worn on the shovel. And especially if you're, um, I'm a big fan of just working off like three or four boards in this kind of weather. Weather, So like, ideally three boards. But I like to move my mortar boards around instead of re-wetting boards up all the time. I like to get my mortar sloppy. Stop me always going backwards and forwards to a tap because if any of you guys know working on site, fucking taps a few and far between you know the miles away they're always miles away you sometimes can get one of these big ta um big bowsers of water right next to where you're working but normally they're like exclusive for plas plasterers and uh there's not always one laying around so because i was gonna try to get one dumped next to me today so i could just fill loads of buckets of water up for five minutes and douse my bricks in water and i tried emptying a bucket of a paint bucket worth of water over my bricks and uh, you know, the basically had little to no effect. I'd have needed, I'd have estimated five buckets of water to make an impact on dampening the bricks. So I'd have needed like a bowser full of water 